Hello. I am here. Let me know if you can hear me. I'm testing things now. I'm back. Film workshop. Another Monday. Hi Jess. I do see ya. Just figuring things out on um, channel channel. Making sure that my camera is working well. Looking good. Hello Canon. How are you doing? Looks like things are smooth. Alright. We are live. This is Plum Workshop slash uh, Munty slash Munto. Um, I am here for another day of garage kit sanding. Um, we've done quite a bit so far. Uh, before I get into that though, how are you guys doing today? How was your weekend? Everything good? I also have another kit uh, fully completed on my left I wanted to show you guys. Um, last time I was kind of deciding to go through my uh, finished kits that I've built and kind of uh, teach you guys or tell you the story behind a couple of them. So I've got another one on my left here. Might as well just show her right now. Um, this is a little cutie. I'm actually gonna turn down my music real quick because I got a little high in my headphones. Um, this is my first SD kit that I ever built. Um, her name is uh, Sleepy Tan or Nemuko, I think. Just that's literally Japanese for sleepy girl. Um, she's an original character, little SD. Forgot what year I built her. Um, I'd have to go back in my uh, website and uh, kind of remember what, what I had done back then. But she's fully painted with acrylic paints by hand. Um, so all of this is brushed on. This was the first time I decided to paint um, a little tanned girl. So I really like tanned skin, but um, a lot of anime kits are, you know, they're pretty white anime style. But I really liked um, the idea of painting this little girl with tan skin and just kind of a more seafoam green palette. Um, also one of the few times that I've actually painted a kit with brown hair now that I think about it. It's not really something that I usually do. Uh, I don't know why, just not really a huge fan of brown hair even though my hair is brown too. <laughs> uh, I also added a few little details on this kit. So there's, yeah, isn't it cute? Hi, Hollow. Oh, hi, baby. <laughs> Finally here on my stream, <laughs> just ranting about my old kits. So this is the first time that um, I decided to add little extras on my kit. And so um, mostly it's just this little ribbon. There's a little rose from like an old sock um, that I had. And so I cut that off and used the little ribbon. Um, I've got some jewels on the side here. And so these are little sticky jewels that you can add um, just their nail art stick designs or little scrapbooking um, gems. And so this is really like uh, one of the first times I thought, oh, you know, I can add li new little things on my kit um, and make her look a little unique. So if you're ever, you know, running out of ideas or if you think your kit's too plain, there's always little things you can do um, to make your kit stand out more. I also really like, you know, looking at her now, the pop of green in her eyes and then I coordinated that with her little um, hair tie and so that's really cute it gives you kind of a few points of uh, focus for your eye to look you know you go to the eyes and then you look down towards that little pop of color um, she also was a little difficult to pin because as you can see she balances on one foot and so that was the first time I ever had to deal with anything like that Actually interesting, I got an email um, about a week ago about uh, another young person interested in building and this was going to be their first kit and so they had a couple questions about, you know, how I built this <laughs> and I had to go back and think pretty hard about it because, you know, it was uh, quite a few years ago and, but, you know, all things considered, um, she still is in pretty good condition. There's, you know, not really any scratches on her except for her little toe area here has a scratch. Um, yeah, the rest looks pretty good. Just, I remember her buttons I was a little unhappy with because they're a little dirty here. And when you're hand painting, it was so hard. How deep is the pin in the foot? Um, I don't even remember, to be honest. If I'm 
being perfectly honest here, I think it was a pretty shallow pin and then I just added a bunch of glue at the bottom. So I know the camera's not gonna pick it up, but her foot is like half glue down there. Um, I would not recommend this. <laughs> it's one of those things you learn as a beginner and you're just like, oh, you know, I gotta do this. Um, but what, what I would ideally do is I drill the hole in the base about this far in. So I don't know if you guys can see, maybe like, I don't know how many centimeters that would be, maybe like two centimeters into the base and then up through the foot, if you can get a, a point where she kind of fits diagonally. Um, my ribbon's in the way, sorry. I would drill it kind of like that. And so you can see you get an access point up through the foot. Um, that should be enough to stabilize it. She's not heavy at all. Um, it's a really light kit. And then, you know, she just kind of sits and does her own thing. So yeah, she's really small. Um, this is actually a scale I typically work with or I enjoy working with. And so I had no idea back then, you know. Also, I know I'm going on about her for a little while, but she's so old that you can kind of see the glue that seeped out. So there's this like yellow-ish stuff and glue that's kind of peeping out here. Um, yeah, and so that uh, that happens um, when you have a kit that's older. Oh, I'm looking at her her pantsu now. <laughs> she has a little uh, there's a little ribbon on it, and it's also that bright green. I don't know if you guys can see it, but anyway, <laughs> enough about this kit. Um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say about her. So we're going to be sanding again today, um, sanding again on Wednesday, just kind of a lot of sanding happening. Uh, last time as a recap, um, we finished sanding her hair. And so she had half of her hair that needed to be sanded down. Um, and then I finished sanding all of her main dress area. And so there were some really bad nubs going on. Um, yeah, I can't even hear my music. There we go. There were some really bad nubs going on, um, as well as a seam line that ran all along the kit. I have not done any other work on this kit except just kind of looking over it. Um, and what I did find is that along the seam line there were a couple more bubbles, and so I just popped those and then left it. So, yeah, that's that. Um, I wanted today to work on some smaller pieces. The rest of the kit's pretty small, but the biggest next one will be these, um, her bloomer slash, uh, you know, legs. That's not really what I want to work on today. So I'm just going to continue with the hair and I'm going to continue maybe with her faces. Um, we'll see. The hair should be pretty good. There's a seam line running all along the edge here. Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh no, what is this? It's my first raid. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I hear something. Oh, I see a Kermie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Power Boy, for following. And I don't know what to... Oh, there's a, a bunch of people here. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm just ranting about what I'm planning to do today. I haven't actually started doing anything today. Also, um, messing around with my music because I couldn't hear it. And so, yeah, um, I'll be working on smaller pieces um, today. We've got these big ones that are already done, so might as well just uh, get going uh, as soon as I can find my sandpaper. I put it away. Okay, I've got a bunch here. I like to keep all of my uh, kind of nubs of sandpaper in a big cup, and so I can just pull them out and put them away. Um. Oh, thank you, Amblush. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, I've come a long way. I'm, I'm glad people are, you know, impressed at this point. <laughs> that means a lot. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna start uh, sanding. <laughs> oh, thank you, Autumn. <laughs> it's showing up regular. <laughs> but yeah, so I've got two pieces of sandpaper here. Um, I've covered this a couple of times at this point, but the purple one will be 400 grit and the black one will be 800 grit. And so what I'm gonna do first for all of these seam lines and initial sandings um, is just go for it and start with the 400 and then you know after that go on the 800. So I'm gonna be chilling out to some tunes. If you guys just wanna chat or have any questions, um, I will be here until 10 p.m. Don't know if I'll go over this time, um, mostly because my throat hurts a little bit. It's just been kind of dark and dry all day, but I'm here and ready to chat.
hopefully these shouldn't take as long either. Um, what I like to do generally is get the big pieces out of the way first and then work on all of the small ones because then once you have all those done, you know, you're ready to keep moving on with the kit. What's the material I'm using to make these? So I technically do not sculpt um, or cast these figures, but all of the figures that I work with and this figure is made of resin. So um, I can't tell you the exact type of resin as there are different brands of resin. Um, but this one is just, you know, we call in this hobby any garage kit um, typically made of, of resin. And so it's a softer material um, of plastic, you know, that is uh, available to artists that they can cast and make into figures. There's also um, 3D, it's like 3D printed resin. It's the same sort of material-ish. There's chemical differences, but um, a lot of like 3D prints and stuff use re resin these days. And that's similar to what this is. Oh no, <laughs> Ben can hear me too. <laughs> Good, well great, now I have a worldwide appeal. <laughs> but yeah, so what I, I do in this hobby is I purchase um, these sorts of kits. They're, they're called garage kits from artists primarily in Japan. Um, and then I fix them up, like what I'm doing now. They come, they typically come with a bunch of issues, such as you know sanding issues. They're unpinned, and so I have to assemble them, and then paint them. So I do all of that. I prep everything and I paint it, um, both uh, personally, like for myself, as well as professionally. Um, I accept requests from other people to paint their figures for them, and then I, you know, it's a commission process. Uh, but although I'm not doing that currently, my commissions are closed um, because I have been accepted into graduate school um, in August. So I put all of my further commissions on hold. I still have a wait list I need to work through. Yep, hey, <laughs> thanks guys. <laughs> yes, like you cat, <laughs> you get an exception. <laughs> yep, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, it's hard to not take on any more commissions because I actually quite have enjoyed it. You know, I've been doing it for about two years now, even though um, I don't have much to show for it because uh, they take quite a while of time. But yeah, I really like working with people. Um, it's a lot of fun, uh, especially receiving somebody's grail kit. So it's like a, a figure that they've dreamed of owning for a long time um, and being able to paint that for them um, and have it come out exactly how they want that is really satisfying to me, so. Let's see, what I'm doing now, I'm sanding. Um, there's a huge hole, well not that huge, but there's a bubble that visibly popped on the edge of this hair, and so it's kind of rough around this area, but I'm gonna have to go back in later and re-sculpt that bit. Um, it's just, yeah, there's a hole here where there should be, you know, the, the end tip of hair, so. Thank you, Curry with Rice. Yeah, so that's my website, um, and it links directly to my gallery of works. And so uh, there's not really a section for commissioned kits versus my own personal ones, but they're all mixed in there. Um, my most recent kit that's listed on there was a commission. So that was uh, Little Nemurine. She's from a Magical Girl anime. Um, very dark, uh, very violent, actually, despite how cute she looks. So that one was fun. Um, cause the client who contacted me about that kit, um, wanted her painted, but more particularly, she really enjoyed my photography, which is something entirely different. Um, I've never received that compliment before that she wanted that kit done with my photography. So that was actually, that meant a lot to me. Um, cause I spend a lot of time trying to learn more about photography and, you know, what, figuring out what would make a good photo shoot and that sort of thing. Just a, another side hobby inside of this hobby, so. <laughs> Lately, I've just been looking at macro lenses. I do not own a macro lens, but um, I'm very interested in purchasing one eventually. Because um, they are primarily used for figure photography. And when you take enough photos with like your camera, you're starting to, like I start to notice the technical limitations of the camera. Um, and so I think having an additional head on it would help. <laughs> it's okay, 
away. Never too late. <laughs> This here sand and it's all there will be a lot more upcoming soon um, as soon as we get through this so but prep work honestly like the initial sanding takes the most time um, as well as like the pinning and fixing process so once we get through this it's going to be sped up quite a bit um, the more prep work you do in your initial setup you know sanding down really well, getting things nice and smooth. You'll have a lot less work later on, so we'll see how much that applies here. Got a nasty gap, or not gap, uh -um, little seam line running underneath this hair piece. So right now I'm just sanding it with the 400 to try to get it out. I might hold it up personally to my eye a little bit um, closer. I also have my X-Acto knife here, and so what I am doing is carving out um, more details and kind of scraping off the extra seam line when possible, because um, that will also cut down on the amount of sanding I need to do. Hopefully you guys can hear um, my sandpaper as well. I checked one of my VODs and I did hear it quite a bit, so that was... <laughs> it's always interesting, the ASMR sandpaper. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I think after I finish this hair, I'd like to work on the faces today because they're nice and easy. Um, just one seam line kind of running along it. Oh, please, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> God, yeah, that's not the type of demographic that I'm necessarily looking for. <laughs> Those mics are pretty expensive too, right? Like they, they're pretty high quality if they're able to pick up on you tapping it and stuff. going to school to study um, environmental health so I won't get too specific into you know the details of it but in short it's a master's degree a master's of science program that focuses on a variety of different things um, whether it's epidemiology toxicology food safety um, basically out of the degree it prepares you for um, being able to diagnose environmental problems work with um, disadvantaged populations, that sort of thing. So um, it's kind of like wastewater treatment or air pollution quality or, you know, helping people in urban areas that don't have access to those things, um, you know, check on their life, that kind of thing. So I'm very excited about it. Um, it's somewhat related to my uh, bachelor degree and my field, but it's a topic of study that is all the more important now, you know, with COVID and everything going around, um, and just in a in a future where climate change is happening, um, we need people who are able to understand the science behind things and um, make informed decisions. So I'm hoping to move in that direction. Oh no, I'm sorry, Hollow. Dang. Well, you know, you can always, uh, you know, check my VOD out later. It'll be up. Um, I'm also working on trying to get YouTube to keep the clips. Uh, I haven't formally done any of that yet, so don't feel bad. Um, you know, <laughs> I'll just be standing here. Um, other questions. Have I ever worked with Cyanon before? No, I haven't. Um, that's so... Cyanon is basically like a filler slash putty slash all-purpose 
um, material that's used to repair resin and, and fix defects such as like this small um, hole in her hair there. Um, it's pretty difficult to find. Like I've only seen it on sale in Japanese sites and then the occasional like Taiwanese and Vietnamese site. Um, and you can't import it because of like, like flammability laws and toxic, toxic laws. And so um, I'd like to work with it someday, but it's just too difficult to acquire here in the U.S. Um, that's pretty much it. How is sanding? It's going. <laughs> Feels like all I'm doing. Um, and it is all I'm doing so far, but I've made good progress. Um, just building a garage kit takes a lot of time in terms of, you know, prepping the kit and getting it ready. So for those of you who have held out so far when we're in like hour five of sanding, thank you. <laughs> it will get more exciting, I promise. Um, that's the thing about kits is that, uh, the excitement varies from kit to kit. You can get ones that are super nice and the cast is, you know, virtually flawless or maybe only has like one or two bubbles and everything fits well. And then you get others which are just an absolute mess and it takes, you know, 50 plus hours just to get it to a point where you're able to paint it. So not so much a problem if you're buying recasts. Um, those are kind of mostly cast the same, you know, they're made with the same casting procedures because they come from a big factory as opposed to these types of kits, which are directly from the sculptors. Um, the quality can vary a lot. Oh, Canon. Yeah, I actually have um, done that with the CA glue and baby powder. It's a, yeah, it's a similar mix. Um, I'd say it works pretty, pretty darn well. Um, it's a very cheap alternative. Uh, when I did work with it, I would, I actually tried to use the two-part epoxy and it worked, but my, you know, my drying time was a lot slower and it kind of ended up sticky after. So I think with any regular CA super glue, it'll work a lot better. Um, that's an old school tip, you know, from the, you know, car forum guys days. I remember reading a lot about that. They would just use baby powder um, and uh, CA super glue to mix. I'd actually bought a whole thing of baby powder and I haven't used it besides that one time. So it's just like sitting in my storage. Um, but if you know Toshki, um, she has done that and used it before. So you may wanna uh, message her. From what I remember, she used it quite often or at least on a couple kits and she liked it. So we're talking right now for those who are hearing this and are just like, what was she even talking about? Um, when you are fixing up a kit, um, there are different products that you can use to basically fix the repairs and or make repairs And so I've got you know little bubbles and areas here that are going to need fixing um, and filling in There's a bunch of different products you can use to do that. And so one of those is uh, mixing together CA super glue and baby powder to kind of make a super strong putty-ish glue putty um, that dries quickly and fills in spaces and it's sandable because of the baby powder and so um, that's an old tip that works pretty well um, I still know people in this hobby that use that method so I'll definitely cover more methods like and, and what I use um, once we get to that point Yeah, I, I have used um, baby powder before. Yes, I, the UV curing resin also works. Um, as you're saying, Kat, how did that go? Did it work well for you? I actually have a jar of it right here. I've been working on it, yeah. So that's another thing I'll cover. Um, I've got a, what I'm holding right now is a UV gel clear R by Gaia Notes. It's a UV curing resin putty, or it's not putty. It's just like a liquid. Um, I wonder if it'll pick it up if I open it up. It's like kind of shiny. You can see on the tips here. It's just a UV curing material. Um, so you put it under a UV light and it works the same as the baby powder method. Um, like I said, there's a lot of ways you can repair. Yeah, yeah, it works really well with sanding it down. Um, I also noticed that those ones don't um, shrink as much as other putties that I've used. So. UV curing gel or nail gel will work really well on filling um, dents and imperfections in your kit. Not really that great for the big stuff. So if you've got like a big piece that has a huge gap, it's not gonna work for that. But for small bubbles and other little imperfections and things you want smooth, um, it'll work really well. Okay. 
sanding in between the hair at this point. So the seam line initially ran along the top of her hair and then kind of went down in the nook here. And now it's in between these pieces, so. That's good. Did you just get um, like a, a nail art brand or did you go with a hobby um, type brand? Because I've heard that both work just fine because it's basically like the same stuff. Okay, good. Yeah, that's, that's the only experience I have as well is the um, hobby brand stuff. This sandpaper is getting pretty, uh, nothing's happening. So I'm just gonna throw it out. Take another batch from my big nub pile here. Some of these are hit and miss. Like I just throw them back in here when <laughs> they need to be in the garbage. But I try to get as much use out of my papers as I can. Working on like all sides. And so if I cut a little piece out, sometimes I just flip it around so I can still, you know, use the area I haven't sanded yet. I've been using epoxy sculpt lately and really vibing with that. Yes, I actually really like that product as well, Pokey Soap. Um, yeah, I I used epoxy sculpt, Avis epoxy sculpt for the longest time. Um, had some good run-ins with it, made some bad beginner mistakes with it. Um, it dries rock hard. That's one of the things I did like about it. And once you get it on, it's not going to go off. Um, sands down really easy too. I think I moved on. Um, yeah, no worry, Autumn. I um, think I did move on. I've got a bunch of putties in my uh, drawer on the right here, but I'm not gonna pull them out right now. I forgot which one I used recently. Really, it's kind of a pain. Like, <laughs> it's the best when kits just fit nicely <laughs> and the only things I have to do are, are bring out like the small liquid putties um, and fix the small stuff. Actually, haven't had to do any huge repairs lately. Um, which I'm thankful for because then at that point it's just like, ugh, it's a pain. Uh, let's see, I did a bit of the jewelry resin making. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, cat. Yeah, it works so well for bubbles. Um, I actually quite like filling in bubbles, but it's just kind of a pain because it also takes like, you know, if not one, two or three passes um, to get everything looking good. And then you got a primer and bubble it, like sand it, bubble it, fill it, etc. Okay. Got this going. Let's see. Seam line is not quite as bad in this hair. Um, and I noticed that for the small pieces, it's not as, um, pronounced and so it's relatively easy to sand these off and then um, keep going with the smaller grit. My mind is blanking today so if I'm just rambling at some points or not making sense I'm sorry. <laughs> The thing you don't want to do with this hair is sand it down too much because it has a very clear sculpt here. Um, the hair kind of goes along straight and then um, if you sand it down too much you're going to end up modifying the look of it on the face. So when it comes to these hair strands, and this is not really so much the case here because these are already kind of rounded, um, you just want to be a little more delicate and go a little slower with your sanding. Make sure you're not losing any detail. or sanding down the kit and making it rounder when like the point should be sharper, that sort of thing. Oh no. Oh, well that's kind of a bummer. Yeah, we put in noise canceling because um, last time when I laugh or if I talk too loud, um, it just gets kind of like grainy and sharp, but it seems that now nobody can pick up the sandpaper. So that's uh, the highlight of my stream. Oh, you can hear it? Okay, well, interesting. Maybe it's user specific. I have no idea. You guys can hear it great. Um, you know, I don't know if you're just here for sandpaper noise, but 
<laughs> if so, I got another thing coming to you because it's not only sandpaper in this stream. <laughs> there will be other stuff. Yeah, we'll have to play around with it um, and just see. You know, I'll watch the VOD after um, I'm done with this. And then if it, you know, is too quiet, then maybe I'll turn off the noise canceling. But we'll, we're still figuring things out here. I'm still new to streaming, so there's bound to be a couple of hiccups along the way. Got another sharp indent here. Sometimes I just kind of stare at a piece for a little while, step back, um, make sure that I'm still working on the area that I want to work on. So you're telling me the key is that I just always have to be talking this entire stream and then you guys can hear the ASMR sandpaper. <laughs> well, <laughs> or is it the element of surprise? When I'm talking you get it and then when I'm silent you know, there's nothing. So if you guys want to hear the sandpaper you just got to keep asking me questions and <laughs> talking to me. <laughs> There's a seam line on the side is actually pretty bad, so I'm just going in with the 400 um, pretty coarsely and trying to get all that out. Also a big nub here. Um, I think I, yeah, it looks like I cut some of that off um, maybe when I was working and trying to fit the pieces together. Um, I'm not sure how much that will affect the look of the kit, so I'm going to have to check after I sand all this seam line down. Sandpaper also pretty used. So on top of my regular pile of semi-used paper, I also have a whole other one full of like new um, ones. So I just take a piece and then I cut off more of that from my pile. Uh, where did I put my scissors? Over here. Yep, my jar. My jar of paper. Cut that, and I'll cut a little smaller. And I just see what happens is I just throw them to the side here, and then I don't know what to do with them, so then they go in the used jar. Once I pick them up and fully use them out, then they go in the trash, but oftentimes I just throw stuff aside and then I don't remember what I used and what I didn't use so it's just a mixture of useful and then totally useless stuff in my used jar <laughs> if that makes sense trying to minimize waste here yeah not like sandpaper super expensive but I just want to make sure I get all of my use out of it and especially the hobby ones there's a lot of um, like the grayish ones in this jar you can kind of see it here so these are my brand, Tamiya brand ones, so I don't like to throw those out until I'm 100% done with them. And then the side. This part's kind of weird. There's a, what looks like a tab that I sort of maybe sanded that's jutting out here. So I'm going to test it against the kit and make sure it's something that I actually need because if I don't then I'm just gonna sand it. Yeah, so you can see there's kind of a weird ridge here. Um, it's not a straight line, kind of like this one's a better straight line, so what I'm gonna have to do is cut all of that nub off um, and just sand it down. Remainder of nub. Let's see. I also was working um, with my X-Acto knife a couple days ago and I broke off the tip, so when you use it too much, that's what ends up happening. So, 
I'll probably switch out my X-Acto knife um, at some point soon. My handle is also very heavily used. I've had this um, kind of comfort grip X-Acto knife handle forever, almost since I started building in this hobby. And so um, still works just as well. Really the only thing you need to replace are the um, tips. You know, you can buy those either online or at a store. Okay, the snub is already pretty um, flat and I don't want to risk digging into the kit, so I'm just going to go in with sandpaper and just sand the back. Uh, have I checked out ceramic scraper? No, I'm not familiar with that product. Is it an electronic uh, sander or like sanding tool? Because there's a lot of those available on the market now. SMS is a brand from Australia um, that initially focused mostly on paints, so lacquer paints. Um, but they've also expanded into a line of tools and have an airbrush now. Um, they're pretty high quality products. They're run by a, a really nice guy. Um, so I very much recommend them if you guys ever get the chance. Uh, I know that uh, USA Gundam store stocks their products, but other than that, I'm not sure if they are any other stores in the US that carry their materials. An exact knife with the blade is interesting. No, I have not heard of that. I'll have to look it up. Um, that's the first time I've actually heard of that. They're very good about, you know, products that modelers need um, or that they want, you know, and have been asking for, but other companies don't provide. So the benefits of that, you know, it's probably worth checking out. They also have so many like nice limited paints that I wish I could get my hands on, but it's like a Australian only thing or like a lottery sometimes. And so there's a lot of pain getting the stuff here in the U.S. And I have so many of their paints, but I just can't find a use for them. So I've got like all of their, a lot of their color shifting paints, um, paints that basically you spray them on. And if you turn a piece, it'll shine different colors. So like it'll shine blue in the middle and purple on the sides. Um, I just, I, I really like buying paints like that, but I don't have a use for them or I can't like part of the kit when I'm imagining it, it doesn't involve um, color shifting stuff. So maybe someday. <laughs> That's true. Oh, does Volks, Volks carries SMS or Volks has a ceramic blade? That's what I'm confused about. Oh, interesting. That's super interesting. There's, um, isn't there like kitchen utensils that have ceramic blades like that as well? <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's an interesting concept. Um, and also it does help, you know, especially if you're prone to like cutting yourself, which happens to every modeler at some point, they end up stabbing themselves with an X-Acto blade. So hopefully that would help. Let me let's see, click this link real quick. Uh, oh yeah, so ZM, Zoke Mura. That's interesting too. 30 bucks. Oof, that's a big boy blade. Oh, sorry. Drop the piece. Um, that's nice. Yeah, I like that product line too. Uh, ZM always makes quality products. So there's a couple options out there. You, it, thing with garage kits is you can use like basically noob tools, <laughs> um, or you can get up into the really expensive stuff really quickly. You know, there's blades you can buy for fifty, seventy, thirty dollars. Um, none of that is necessarily needed in this hobby. Um, there are definitely benefits to using tools like that occasionally. Um, and, you know, if it's hobby made by a company that works with hobby products, you know, it's going to work for your kit. Um, but really, yeah, it just depends what you intend to do or if you want to work with that stuff. Also, the um, nicer quality stuff, it does last a long time. So it's, you know, you're buying it for life um, type deal. Well, cool. yeah, I'm gonna have to look at those links and see, um, cause I just used an X-Acto life knife my, uh, you know, whole hobby building career and I've never had an issue with it, but it's always nice to, um, you know, look at new products and get new ones. There's a couple of blades and kind of hobby chisels that I've always had on my wish list or things I'd like to buy someday, but I just haven't gotten around to doing it. Okay, sanding this. Hair. I'm running all along the top here. I, I'm leaning in. 
And I noticed a bubble. Uh, yeah, so there's a little bubble here um, in the hair that I'm gonna drill out real quick. When I held this piece up to the light um, prior to this stream, there were a bunch of bubbles in the hair, so I'm gonna have to get in and, and take a look again. Right now, just sanding along the edge. A lot of times what I do is I go through a rough pass and sand over the whole thing and then a little finer pass through. So if there's any seam lines I missed, I can start targeting those. Okay. This side is mostly smoothed down. Um, last time we talked about it, um, we said that it won't be too big of a deal on either side if the nub is kind of still there because when the pieces are put together, there's going to be a little um, like headdress or ribbon that'll go in the top here and you won't be able to see either side. So um, as long as the pieces mostly fit, you're good. Let me just test it just in case though. Let's see how it's looking. So yeah, so this side here is fitting really nice. You can see it's a pretty, there's a seam line or not seam line. There's a line here. It's basically the joint of where the pieces connect, but it is mostly smooth. This one though, oops. You can see the resin's kind of sticking out here. So my options are sand it down so it's a little bit smoother here or um, putty it up. So like putty this side up, which given that this side is already pretty smooth and along here, I think I'm gonna start to sand down a little bit and see where that takes me. What I also might do um, for purposes of this stream is after the kit is built, mostly built and painted, what you can do is putty along the edges here and make it so the hair looks like it's just one piece. So that at that point, the kit will be pretty much glued and assembled together, but it's an additional puttying and painting step that happens after you're done painting the kit. A little more advanced, um, but the payoff is generally worth it because then it just looks like it's one cohesive piece. Um, it's not really possible to do that beforehand because the the face has to fit in here and well actually I don't know if that will be possible because she comes with two face plates and so like normally if you only had one face plate you could you know glue the face in here and then putty the hair on you know and that would be no problem but the issue with this kit is she comes with two different faces so I think what I will have to do is just skip that step and make all of these pieces here magnet, like magnetable. Is that even a word? Sorry. <laughs> um, make it so there's magnets in, you know, the, the faces and the hair, and then that way I can swap it out whenever I want. Um, just things that go through your mind as you're working on the kit. You know, how can I make this work? Um, what can I do to make it look better? You know, what will and won't happen? Lots of different options you can take. There's no need necessarily to use both faces either, but um, I like having options, so. <laughs> it's a word now. Yeah, like I said, I've been feeling kind of out of it today. Um, it's just been really dark and rainy and i am just been tired, so. I ate a lot of cookies today though, because I baked cookies last night, so that was, that was good. Uh, let's see. Looking at the piece, I'm gonna sand down. Another thing you wanna be careful of is you're not sanding too much along the edges if they already fit well. So like, I've got the kit here, her hair fits in here. I don't wanna go in and sand like the back of here cause that's just gonna create a gap. Um, oh good, I'm glad your qual the quality is nice. Um, that's one of the things we really wanted to do early on is get people used to having nice um, quality video because if you're tuning into someone who's just like the whole purpose of this is visual then it's good to have um, you know some good viewing to get water okay so I've sanded all along the top here um, there's some slightly weird stuff going on um, with the top, it just looks kind of like it's indented in a couple areas. This is a casting defect. Um, 
Not sure there's much I can do in that case besides sand it down, but then you risk over sanding. So I'm just gonna go lightly with the 400 and see if I can smooth out some of these dents in the resin. The back hair had that problem too, but I didn't work too much on it. Just a few areas where it's not totally smooth. Would I ever use a handheld drill or something? Okay, so, um, not, I've, I've considered it. Um, I've considered like a Dremel or electronic tools to sand down um, my stuff because there are hobby, lots of hobby drills and um, hobby sanders available. Um, but I really like the feeling of just rubbing the sandpaper on the resin with my hand. Um, and I like feeling the texture and everything. So from a personal standpoint, I probably won't move on to those. Um, I did used to have a Dremel, and the Dremel is like a, an all-purpose hobby tool that sands and drills and does all sorts of things. Um, but I found for the scale that I'm working at, so the kits that I work on are pretty small, um, it was more difficult to control it because the Dremel itself is like this big. So you have to hold the, the big Dremel and then you're working on like a piece this small with your big Dremel and it just, it wasn't working for me. So. Uh, for bigger kits, if you're working with, you know, one sixth scale or larger, which, you know, they end up being a foot or, or larger, you know, kits like that big or larger, um, it may be a, a good investment for you if you're looking to start building kits. Um, but for me, you know, the scale I work at is so small. Um, I don't really have size comparisons here, but I guess like this is a regular pair of scissors and this is the kit I'm working on. so. A lot of um, the stuff I work at is this small, yeah. And the kit I showed earlier, like, that's how big she is. So, for the, you know, size I work at, it just didn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. What about handheld? Um, interesting. I actually never considered that, BB. Um, and yeah, I, a lot of times nail art tools and nail, you know, techniques and things actually do overlap with this hobby. Uh, more often than you think, you know, whether it's products or stickers or little tools because, you know, you're working with such a small detailed thing, um, it would make sense. I'll have to look into that and see. But yeah, <laughs> same here, Kat. <laughs> I just, I like the feeling of the paper, I like holding the piece. There's all sorts of, you know, tools available to even hold the pieces for you while you're working on stuff and I just kind of do it old school and, and sand things by hand. Um, my kits definitely don't get finished as quickly because of that. You know, I know people that finish two, three kits a month, um, every month, and they're able to do that and paint it and get it going, no problem. But um, for me, it's more about the process to get there and the, it, it's almost therapeutic being able just to sit here and zone out and listen to music and work on stuff. Like, I'm not in a competition or a race with anybody. Like, I don't need the tools that, you know, make me go way faster. They are nice to have. <laughs> I'm not opposed to using them. So if I got one as like a gift, I would definitely use it. But um, for my own personal use, I wouldn't probably do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, some people have that huge backlog cannon. Um, so they do need <laughs> the, the stuff that's gonna let them bust through it. I am guilty too. I have a huge backlog of kits, um, but you know, it is what it is, right? <laughs> Right now, um, you guys can't see me on the screen, but I am holding up her hairpiece to the light and I'm starting to pop a little bubbles that I see in the hair. So one of the things you can do if you notice a little dent in your kit or if it may have bubbles is hold it up to a, your hobby light or a lamp. And because resin is semi-translucent, you'll be able to see um, the bubble inside of it and then pop it out. There's a lot of little ones along the um, edge of the hair, and then there's a couple more in the regular hair area, like coming towards the front of the kit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Should make my um, Amazon wish list or whatever. I know a few hobbyists that do that. They have like literally a wish list on their website for people just to buy them stuff. And I'm, I don't know, I'm definitely not about that. <laughs> I don't really care that much about trying out new stuff or, you know, asking people to buy stuff for me. It's just, I'm not a big gift person, but 
if there is a product that you're um, interested in seeing on this <laughs> new stream, um, I will try them out. I just saw a Kermie. Thank you so much for the sub. Oh, there was a whole bunch. I'm sorry. I missed you guys. <laughs> Ibuprofen. I love that name. Thank you. Um, we're just building kits. Even though you can't see anything right now, um, I'm holding up my piece to the light and I'm drilling out a few bubbles that I see. Um, to make it easier to fix them later so let's see i've got they're kind of all in a line right now which is weird sometimes they're kind of everywhere and other times they're just in a line okay there's also not a scratch that's another bubble so sometimes when you sand down enough too you end up uh almost popping those bubbles or they become visible so nice that's what I'm hoping is that people will build kits together or at least, you know, use the VOD and um, have some reference for what to do. What are you working on? What kit are you working on? <laughs> Canon, you should. <laughs> Healthy like slash S. <laughs> I would probably try it. I feel like everybody owns that already my five. Um, that's a really nice sand. It's like an electronic sander. <laughs> Yeah, I've always been interested in it, but it's just kind of like, uh, I'm so slow to adapt like new products. Like it took me forever to even buy um, like curved masking tape and like liquid masking. But once I like start something then I actually use it a lot. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that you um, got some use out of it. That's the goal, you know, is to help people who are unsure or don't, you know, have as many resources figure out, you know, what works best and encourage them to try different methods or ask um, for my advice, you know, because I've been at it for quite a while. Oh, nice. Yeah, everybody working. Let's see. Cool, yeah, send me the link. Um, and I will take a look. I always like seeing what other people are working on and progress photos are always fun. Let's see. <laughs> no, BB. <laughs> I'm not asking anybody to buy me stuff. That is just something else. <laughs> I'm definitely not a gift person. I, Curry would know. I don't ask for things really at all. Okay, um, let's see. So I actually sanded most of the in, like outsides um, of the piece and it's looking really smooth. The only thing that I missed in my initial pass was the inside, like the inner edges of these hairs. So like when one hair ends and the next one begins, there's a little space in between and that's where my seam line um, is still present. So I'm gonna take my used sandpaper tub um, and cut a little thin piece of the 400. Let's Yay, everybody working. Good. See. Working on putty. That's cool. Let me take a look at this link. Oh, that's a cute kit. Ooh, old school. Love it. Actually, I think I saw your Instagram story. I was looking um, on Instagram because I was trying to figure out stories and then I think I clicked on, on yours and I saw her um, and she had like a really bad gap in the, in the front. Um, <laughs> pets tonight probably not um rocket's sometimes in here i just looked over and he's not present right now his thing lately is sleeping on my bed uh, because we bought a hot water bottle so it's just like an old person water bottle that you put full of boiling water and it keeps you warm in the night um, and so i've got that on the bed but rocket discovered it and so now he won't leave the bed alone But yeah, they probably won't show up. I also have this room gated off um, from Missile because it's kind of rocket space. Rocket's my cat. Um, and so he's got all of his toys in here and he's got a hot um, heat pad as well in here, but he's not currently present. <laughs> yeah, I saw that gap. I don't know what's going on with that. That's the, the sign of an old school kit. Um, it's got that old school yellowy resin and the big gaps. Yeah, I, you're gonna have some work to do on that one for sure. But you can do it. I know you can. 
Um, and again, we'll be covering putty and stuff here. So when it gets to the point where you need to do that on your kit, um, you'll have the tools and resources available to do so. That one will probably need the big scale stuff like the um, Avis epoxy sculpt that was talked about earlier. I keep talking about all these products. Um, <laughs> I just want to like pull them out and then like patience, we'll get there. <laughs> Okay, standing again the top of the hair. I'm just kind of going randomly for it at this point because I'm turning it against the light and I'm just seeing these weird um, kind of uneven areas. So my goal is to smooth it down a little bit with the 800. I don't want to go too much with that 400 because then I'll end up doing more scratchy damage. Oh geez, I love those old kits, man. There's something else. They, sometimes the parts break down on those kits are not very good and um, you know some really older kits even from famous uh, sculptors like Tease System they're old kits and I'm, I'm talking like early 2000s to 2010s um, they're a wreck you know they're filled with putty hole or not putty holes but air holes and all sorts of things gaps like you saw weird parts break down um, so yeah, working on those in itself, like that's an experience. Uh, and you'll gain a lot of valuable experience from getting through them. Thankfully, you know, well, it depends on the kit. Thankfully this one, the parts breakdown is pretty simple and smart, you know, so like you don't have this attached to the skirt already. Whereas some kits, they, they just come like this, you know, the kits will be like all one piece. And you say, how am I gonna work with this? Like, how do I sand all of what's inside of here? Yeah. The more parts a kit has, it seems like it would be a pain in the ass, um, but sometimes it's just pretty useful because then you can paint each piece individually and you don't have to worry about, you know, fitting issues or um, masking a lot of different things. I think that um, she will be fine, Canon, because that's a pretty newer kit. I've only really heard the criticism about T-System with their super old kits, like the 2000s, um, pretty, pretty early stuff. I mean, they were T-System, um, Miyagawa Takeshi was selling things as early as like the late 1990s. And so those ones, you know, they're pretty rough, but when you think about it, why wouldn't they be, you know, like the casting methods back then were totally different. It's almost 30 years ago. So I've got a kit that I bought um, relatively recently. It was a grail kit, um, but she was made in, I think like 2004. And that kit is just one of the worst ones I've seen. It's a byproduct of its era. At this point, I just own it because it's like a relic and it's interesting. I don't know when I'll ever get around to building that one though. Oh yeah, exactly. But it just, sometimes it's even worth it just, you know, sawing into the kit and breaking it apart. And so then the pieces are a little bit easier. Like you can all, the thing about kits is you can always pin stuff back together if you need to. Um, I've considered that on a, a couple pieces. There's like a Yotsuba kit, um, Yotsuba from Yotsubato um, that I have, and she's basically like one piece. And so I thought about sawing her arms off or something and making it a little easier to paint. Okay, so I'm still going along this. There is an interesting spot here. It's kind of glossy and it looks almost like a scrape, um, but I don't really want to deal with that. So I'm going to take a larger drill and just drill into that. So before I think you guys have only seen me pin with the, or drill into pins, God, I can't talk today. Drill into my kit with this pin vise and this pin vise. But I actually have a third one that I use. Um, and this is the largest size I work with, pretty much my maximum. Um, and this I use for big, bigger areas, um, areas that need more, oops, big bubbles popped out and also like my biggest pin size. So yeah, it, it's really not that big, but I just drilled into it right here. You guys can see it. So yeah, that will eliminate the need to over sand that down because I still want to keep this nice and round. Um, I'll just fill that in later. Okay. Let me take a look real quick. I see a Kermie out of my eye. Thank you, Ava Cutie Pro One. 
thank you for the sub. I, I very much appreciate it. Um, been just sanding these past two streams, now third stream. Um, slowly getting through the kit um, that I'm working on. A cute little maid, but most of the big pieces are out of the way at this point. So now I will just be working on the smaller stuff, except for this. Her bloomers are like the big one. Um, big. I say big in quotes. She's not a big kit. Uh, let's see. Okay. So I'm gonna look along each hair strand again. The top is looking pretty good. I don't think I need to do much more work on that. There's a little bit of a jagged edge along this hair piece, so I'm just gonna shave it down with my exacto knife and then go over it with some sandpaper. Okay, and then I'm gonna look here again. Thankfully, there's not any bubbles um, in between her hair strands. So that's something that I have experienced before is like bubbles inside of the hair strand. Um, that can be a real pain. It's, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but it's just like, dang it, more work. Okay, there's still a seam line kind of on the inside here, but oops, it's just a different color. Yeah, still looks like it's present. I'm gonna shave it a little bit. Oh. Okay. oh yeah, and I forgot I have my cloth sandpaper too. So um, for those who are just tuning in, I also on top of regular paper have these sort of flexible cloth sandpapers um, that I use. This one in particular is a 600 grit. Um, they come in all different sizes like regular sandpaper. So I just attach it to a clip, an alligator clip, um, and grab it with my finger and Kind of flex it back and forth this way. There's also little jigs you can make, um, kind of handmade ones with clips on either side and gluing stuff together, but I just like the flexibility that comes with using one, so just kind of rubbing it back and forth at this point. Okay, let's see. Actually, it was pretty good. I sanded most of it off. There's just a little bit left um, on the inside, like really deep inside here. So, don't know if I can get that with the cloth. This is also feeling worn out. Let's... Okay. I do not remember this song at all. The look over. Whatever. Okay. This piece is mostly done. Um, at this point, I've got that inside covered. I might go back in post stream and just give it a, a look up close, um, make sure that that seam, seam line is gone. But the rest of this looks pretty good. I'm going to cut a little bit more on the inside. I've bended this 800 and I'm rubbing it in the inner edges here. So. That should smooth out any additional seam lines that are left over. Okay, this area over here on the edge of the hair was a little bit of a pain because there's this hair piece that's sticking out here so the surface isn't flat. But that's fine. It's not 
Not a big deal. We'll just sand under it. Just cutting a little bit more out from the bottom um, of this tiny hair strand that's sticking out because I noticed the seam line was still present there. That's an area that I uh, kind of glossed over before because I saw all of the seam lines running along these pieces or areas. Mm, okay. Oh, it looks like there's a bubble here too. So I've sanded down enough that I just spotted a bubble on the edge of the hair. Okay. I'm gonna hold this piece up to the light and see if there's any others. Yeah, so there's one more bubble right next to this that I wouldn't have seen unless I held it up to the light. So I'm gonna pop that one too. I'm not drilling very deep here for these bubbles. Um, you don't wanna go in too deep, especially if you're introducing like a UV curing gel because then it's got to all seep in there and you risk um, the resin forming bubbles. For putty it's not as big of a deal um, because you can just like keep pressing putty into the hole um, but I don't see any reason to add more. Like very loud downstairs. <laughs> I'm not sure what Curry's yelling about, but I can hear him from down here. <laughs> Must have like won a game or something. saying it looks like it's almost done and then I, I find new stuff um, but that's usually what happens is I'm like oh it's good and then you blink or you close your eyes and you look away and you look back and there's just there's more issues with it so um, putting it aside sometimes and coming back works too like I found a, a hair not a hair line but a seam line that was kind of here that I missed last time and I hadn't looked at the kit in nearly a week um, I only found it you know an hour ago so yeah, if you're feeling worn out or if you think, oh, maybe I missed something, just set your kit aside and come back later and you'll find more. Okay, but really though, um, I'm pretty sure I'm good at this point. There's a few areas that I will touch up after um, the stream or some other time before when next Wednesday or this coming Wednesday. But I do want to move on to another piece. Um, and this is looking pretty good, so... Time to move on. Um, I'm going to set aside this hair piece. She's pretty much good at this point. Um, I can test it one more time and hold it together. And you can see that this jagged edge that was there before, see if I can, yeah. So this jagged edge that was standing out before is not there anymore. So um, I'll be able to put in any little, let's see if it, yeah, I'll be able to put in the pieces here and it won't show the line that was there before. Looks like the ribbon is fitting in a little bit better than the made hairband, but that's also because there's a bunch of um, extra flash and seam line stuff in it. Also looks like it's just not... Let's see. Okay, so yeah, I had the piece reverse, so it's supposed to fit in like this. That's a little better fit, but it's still not quite as cute as I want it. Oh, and actually sanding it did help um, the fit of this side, so it, there's a lot less space here jutting out now. Sanding it down helped a lot. Um, what you can also do is kind of hold the pieces together and then sand along the area that you think that's jutting out too much um, and that will smooth it down a little. So what I'm doing right now is I'm holding her face together and sanding along the edge of the hair that's sticking out and that will smooth it down a little more. If you have a nice fitting kit, this won't be a problem already um, that you need to do, but a lot of kits, they do have issues like this, so. Okay. 
can take the kit off um, or the pieces off, put them back together if you're building up a bunch of dust because then you can't see it. I'm also kind of getting thrown off here because there's a seam line that's a different color along the edge of the hair um, and it looks like a shadow but it's really not so um, I don't want to over sand. Let's this top here is a little bit rough too. I'm going to sand that down. It's a lot easier to um, like sand things down, but a lot harder to build it back up. So when you're sanding down, just be mindful. You know, you can definitely repair most things with putty, but it's going to be a lot harder to fix like a really deep dent um, from over sanding in this case here than it is to like, you know, just not go as quickly and work carefully. Okay. Take a quick look again. Looking kind of odd, to be honest. Um, the, the hair on this side just doesn't fit very well compared to the other side of the kit. Not really something you want to have happen to your kit. But, you know, you get what you get, especially if you're buying original. And this is definitely from a very small time sculptor, so it's bound to come with some issues. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside for real now. I'll come back to it later and I might end up smoothing more of that down, but we'll see. For now, I'm gonna move on. Oh, whoops, well, that was my phone. <laughs> I had it charging on the side. Um, but yeah, it's fine, don't worry. Anyway, we'll keep going. Oh my God, now I move the camera. I'm just a mess. We're good. All right, so moving on. Um, we've got this head here now. There's not really any huge seam lines or issues with it. Um, I did notice when I was looking at the piece that it does have a seam line that runs all along here. And there's unfortunately um, not so much bubbles, but dents in the resin where I am going to have to drill in and fill it over again with putty to make the area smooth. So. It's not necessarily a bubble that you'll see, but if you're looking at the kit and you paint it, it will almost look like a pock mark, like a little dent or an indent. I mean, that's not something you want, especially not on a kid's face. Like, you don't want it to look like, you know, she had some not smooth, pretty anime face. So we will be fixing all of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be like rude to my kids. <laughs> Why do you have um, like acne scars <laughs> on your maid kit? Um, but yeah, that's stuff that does happen. Um, one of the kits I had in SD1 was the worst kit I ever worked on. And um, he had so many little indents and pock marks on his face. By the time I filled them all in, it just looked like he had a full face full of acne. It was so bad. But then, you you know, you prime over and it's all good. Um, your job is to fix all that, so. Make it anime smooth, because nobody has any skin imperfections in anime. You don't even really see freckles that much in anime, and that's something I actually do like a lot, is like freckled characters, so. That's a cute idea. Maybe I'll end up using freckles on this kit. I do like that. An idea. You know, and there's also things you can do if, you know, you're not feeling it and you don't want to fix these little indents and pockmarks is do stuff that would make it look like it's intentional, like have freckles. Um, then nobody will notice. Yeah, freckled kits are so cute. It's just, I wish that happened more often.
especially um, when you're working on the face, you don't want to over sand because messing with that um, can really impact the shadows and how the kit looks. You don't want to end up sanding the jawline to a point where, you know, it's irreparable. So I'm kind of going harsh with the 400 now, but it's on areas I know that aren't going to be um, super important. It, uh, most of the seam lines are kind of along the edges of her face. So I'm not going to go in on the top and like seam her um, or sand her eyelashes and stuff down because this kit does have visual visible eyelashes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I will then. <laughs> Everyone likes freckles. Um, but yeah, you can see it like she has little eyelashes that are sticking out here. This is part of the sculpt um, The other kit has that as well. So especially with details like this You don't want to go in all gung-ho and end up sanding those down same with um, like her nose area She has a nose. It's just very very subtle and small um, It's a little poking out and so um, you can see it more in this angle It just sticks up and goes down so you don't want to sand that nose down and just have it like at a slope. Um, try to preserve the details of your face as best you can. Sometimes it's just not possible, um, you know, and then you have to go in and do other repairs, but ideally that won't happen, especially if you're just starting out. Also, her head is kind of um, unique because it's not filled with resin in the back. So a lot of times you just get like filled resin heads. Um, this kit, actually, I have another kit I'm about to show um, that I posted on my Instagram. It's like a little maid, that, another maid. <laughs> I'm just working on lots of maids and little kits. Um, but her head in the back, you can see is fully filled in. So you can see, um, you know, the difference here. This one already has magnets installed because I've just been working on it in my spare time. But usually the, the heads are filled in. This is an odd case here. Yeah, sculpted lashes, I actually really enjoy them on kits. Um, I really enjoy sculpted eyes or even just eye indents. Um, I think as modelers, um, it's a lot more difficult and you have to have a knowledge of how to almost draw anime if you're working on a totally blank canvas. Because it's a lot easier to paint eyes already if you've got a general guideline or sculpted lashes or an indent. Um, if you're just given like a blank Nendo face, um, if you're not, you know, experienced in painting or drawing or anime or any of that, it can be very easy to get those proportions wrong and get your character looking cross-eyed or weird or one eye's bigger than the other. So um, a lot of kits these days, newer kits, um, sculptors do take the time to at least add eye indents um, to make things easier for beginners. A lot of kits also these days come with eye decals, so if you are hesitant about painting eyes, you don't even have to. Um, Whoopie Pie kits, the sculptor a lot of us are familiar with in this hobby, has a whole line of bird kits, like little girl, chibi girls. Um, is like birds um, and all of her kits come with eye decals so they're very popular among newer modelers and people who don't have as much time because you can just you know have the decals on and you're good and the breakdown is cute and the kits are cute personally i would much rather prefer a kit come with sculpted eyes or an eye socket or anything to help me in, in painting um because there have been you know plenty of times where i've painted eyes on a blank canvas, um, but it takes me a little bit longer and um, I'm always concerned, you know, that it's not gonna come out right. There's more room for error if you already have uh, sculpted eyes. <laughs> yeah, the burbs. Yeah, always the birds, I swear. Everybody I know has a bird these days. <laughs> They're cute though, I can't blame it. I also have a collection of bird kits sitting in my closet. Um, it's definitely like they're right up my alley. I don't know why I haven't painted them yet. They've just got a lot of prep work associated with them and um, I just haven't been in the right mood to, to tackle them. And then the more birds you get, you're like, well, I gotta paint them all. And it's just, ugh. I've got other plans. Don't know if I'll build a bird this year.
You know, it's definitely possible, Canon. Um, I painted eyes with acrylic for years, and I know very like quite a few German builders, and that all they do is paint with acrylic. They don't use the lacquer enamel eye method. Um, in fact, that's a relatively new eye method. If I'm being perfectly honest, majority of people did not use that building and like painting with lacquer eyes and enam or enamel eyes and on lacquer. Um, <laughs> like, let's see, if I started in 2009, I didn't start seeing people do that until maybe 2018. So that's like basically 10 years of the hobby that everyone painted eyes with acrylic. Um, it's like the rise of Twitter and Japanese sculptors posting their method that suddenly this became like the standard that everyone has to do. Um, there's a lot of room for forgiveness with the enamel eye technique, um, but there's also something special about being able to just go at it with acrylics, you know. I do have a mini guide on my website um, of how I used to paint eyes with acrylic. Um, and the methods are like almost this, they're pretty similar to the enamel wiping technique. You just slowly build up layers um, of paint. And most of the German and, you know, international modelers I know that still use um, acrylic to paint everything, they like mix the paint eyes on the kit and stuff. There's some pretty cool effects you can get and it, it's a different look, you know. Yeah, I've had really positive experience um, when I've engaged with the German modeler builder community. It's a whole different subset of builders um, that a lot of them build Sailor Moon style kits and that's pretty much all they do, but they're very kind. Um, at least they've been kind to me <laughs> and I've known many of their members for years because we all used to post together on the old uh, E246 recast forums back when we all bought recasts and stuff. So. Um, all of that closed down. That's a whole treasure trove of info that's lost um, in the internet, but a lot of the people I've met have stayed the same. But yeah, I follow, like, I think you were talking about, who was it? Not Levy, there was some other woman you were talking about um, at some point on Discord, um, that, who I had known for years. Um, yeah, I, I admire a lot of those builders. Um, they're all, they've all been in it as long as me and they're all doing their own thing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, okay. I've got one piece of 800 here that's dying. So I'm going to switch to this new one. Yeah, Levy or Levy. I, yeah, I really like her work a lot, actually. Um, I've been following her for so long. Um, and she's really kind. So another one you may want to also look into is Suiko Seed. Um, she is also on Instagram and she uses Copic markers to paint her eyes. So, you know, you can really just do it however you want. I don't know why the standard is now, like, if you don't paint enamel method, like you aren't painting kits. Cause you know, you can really use whatever you want. I do it just because I'm a pretty big perfectionist. And so um, painting with acrylic as I did for so many years, it wasn't giving me the results I wanted anymore. I wanted to take my skills kind of another level at the same time wanting to um, have that forgivability that enamel offers is the way the method works and I'll be covering it here too. Um, you're basically painting with two different paint types. You're taking a lacquer um, sealer or a top coat and spraying it on your face and then you're going to go in with another paint type an enamel and paint you know some of the eyelashes or the details. What happens though is you have the ability to wipe off the enamel without hurting the paint underneath because the lacquer top coat is stronger than the enamel. And so what you essentially do in this like enamel wiping technique is you slowly build up layers of lacquer top coat and enamel paint. And then each one you get, um, the previous layer won't be affected by the next one. So it's a very slow process, um, but the payoff is worth it. Uh, on my gallery, most of my painted eyes and my recent works, they all use that technique. Um, and it's just something that takes time and patience. Who was the artist that uses Copic markers? I think her name was Suiko Seed. So let me check real quick on my Instagram and make sure that was it. She's been in this hobby for, oh, about as long as I have. Um, we used to post together on the E20 forums. Let's see. Seed. Yep, so it's just uh, S-U-I-K-O-S-E-E-D on Instagram. 
and she also paints um, resin kits. She works mostly with um, Sailor Moon stuff, but she paints with a variety of things like watercolor pencils, Copic markers, all sorts of things. But yeah, what I was saying is I enjoy um, the enamel method just because I take forever in painting and using that method allows me to really get in and figure out the details I want and I can wipe off whatever I don't like. Okay, I'm popping some bubbles here, but I visibly like heard a pop, so that's uh, both good and bad, I guess. Holding the kit up to the light again. Oh, I don't know if I should deal with these pock marks. Let me see. So. Okay, I'm holding the kit up. Yeah, no problem. I'm holding the kit up to the light and there's like one pock mark that's basically hidden, but there's two more that are right under the hair, unfortunately, and I'm gonna have to drill those out and smooth it down. As long as it doesn't hit the eye area, I'm good. Okay. Oh yeah, monkey. Um, Suiko also has like step-by-step -step on her Instagram for how she does eyes as well, so that is actually really interesting. I always like when artists do that. Um, step by step is always appreciated. I try to do that too sometimes, but it's like after some so long, I'm like using the same method. I'm like, do I really need to post like eight photos of me doing the same thing? Okay. Um, ugh, her neck area is a little rough. It's just. It's kind of resin in weird spots and it's not smooth at all so I'm gonna have to go in and smooth around it <laughs> yeah seriously that's what it feels like this time there are definitely a few pieces that I was like um, we're gonna have a hell of a time with bubbles and then I looked at them and I don't see them anymore so I don't know if I'm just like going blind or what's going on but the thing about them is when you hold them up to the light, you can't tell how close to the surface they are either. So they may just be like deep in that resin and you're not gonna have an issue with them anyway. Um, what we really wanna do is just pop those surface ones and then we're gonna go over with a putty and see if we can find any more that weren't visible. Kind of sanding along the neck area and the bottom of her jaw right now. At this point, when you're like this close, um, by this close I mean like the face is super close up against here, so this crevice in between, it's not 100% needed for you, know, for you to smooth it down and make it look really nice because you're not going to be seeing it at all. Like the kit's going to be visible like this. You're not going to see the underside here um, unless you pick it up, you know, and nobody's going to be picking up this kit. So I won't go as hard on the repairs here. But I do want to make sure that the neck is nice and smooth. So, unfortunately, this kit has a really tiny and thin neck. It almost looks more like a peg or some sort of, you know, uh, insert. But that's just her neck. It just fits in um, like this. So, actually, yeah, it, it's snug, but there's still that little gap there. So, what I got to do is uh, sand down the seam line. There is a seam line. It's running all along both sides of her neck. So. I'm gonna go lightly with the 400. I do not want to over sand this because if I do, um, she won't have a neck. <laughs> so I guess you can, you know, if you do over sand it and you make a, an error, there are things you can do. You can use a metal rod, um, the same diameter and thickness, and that will be a substitute neck. But you know, you don't really want to get to that point if possible. So I'm just gently going along the neck with the 400 trying to rotate this paper sandpaper um, as opposed to the cloth one 
which I can use, but uh, actually it's the right thickness. So what I'll do is I'll go real slow with the cloth one and rotate it. So what I'm doing is I'm rotating the piece back and forth um, just to kind of get the area all over it pretty smooth. move my phone and keep like edging it towards the end of the desk so yeah I'm going along the um, edge of the neck right now just smoothing it out slowly I will also have to do this on the other neck of the kit okay. looking pretty good also a little piece of resin sticking out of the end of the neck which I will sand down, but other than that, I won't need to do any adjustments. There's also a little bit of a seam line right along the gap, or not the gap, the um, edge of where her neck transitions into her head. So I'm gonna look at that real close and very carefully take my X-Acto blade and shave down that. And I'm going to smooth it out more. So once you got that um, area cut out, just go in with your 800 and smooth along the, the neck. Tiny little seam line, actually. Hmm, looks more like a bubble to me. So I'm going to pop out uh, this bubble. Pretty difficult to see. I'm going to have to hold it up real close to my head real quick. So. Yeah, it's just like in the crevice of her neck. And it might have been a seam line too, but at that point I don't want to over sand it, so it's easier just to fill it in. Okay, same thing is kind of happening on the other side where there's um, a little bit of a seam line left over. But it's easier just to shave it down. Okay. And then smooth. She also had a bunch of seam line along her ears. So really, the whole pit, like, face had seam lines. So I'm gonna peel off the extra resin along the bottom of her ear and then sand that down with the 800. Her ears are not detailed either. They're, they don't have any um, indents or things going on with them. It's just kind of sticking out the edge of the kit. It has a very simple form, so there's not really any risk of over sanding the details of this. But I am going to go along the back edge because it's looking kind of jaggedy and pointy. I want to smooth out that ear. Yeah, there's a seam line running along the top here too. So, going along the top. Moving that down, and then I'm gonna go in with the 800 and round it out. What you can also do is um, put it against your kit to make sure that you're not over sanding it. So you can see her ear is still um, pretty smooth against it. It's rounded out, it just looks a lot nicer now. The other uh, ear, when I look at it, still relatively same, kind of pointy. Um, these I assume are more or less cast the same, but they just have um, two different eye styles, so. I don't know if the sculptor also did a 3D model um, first and then, you know, printed. That's very popular these days, is just making a, a figure sculpt in like Blender or ZBrush um, and then printing that and then using that as the base um, to make casted figures. This one doesn't feel that way though, so a lot of times um, you can kind of tell if it's 3D printed versus made by hand. And this one has what feels like some traditional sculpting methods. The style's a little similar. It's got um, what I assume are like areas where they went in and they dug details out with a little hobby knife. Um, so at least that's just my guess. 
That really also has no bearing on what this kit will, you know, look like painted or the details. But I like it when kits are also hand sculpted or made, you know, with a traditional method as opposed to a 3D print. Both are really cool, but it feels a little personal too when you're uh, working with something that someone probably sculpted by hand in their prototype. Yeah, I gave this an initial sanding at this point. Um, all of her has been, this seam line started here and ran all the way around. Um, I've sanded all of that down at this point, so now I'm kind of taking a second pass, or pass 2 point, or 1.5. I already kind of did some details before. I'm also going to skip this. Yeah, old school is always fun. Um, can't. Mm, not, not really liking this playlist today. Uh, yeah, this one's weird. I'm gonna get docked for that. This is good. Okay. All right, keep going. So yeah, I'm, I finished one pass. Um, I started digging out details and putty, or not puttying, filling out bubbles and stuff. So that will kind of be the point five. And now I'm gonna go through again and just look over it. Um, there will be a lot less to find this time because I've already sanded down everything, but. I recommend giving your kit at least two looks before you move on to another um, piece of the kit. Yeah, so I've already found, like I missed the um, seam line here in the top gap between her ear and the head. Oh, and there's a bubble. So I just popped the bubble here and there's a bubble right along her ear that I'm gonna dig out a little more. Yep, it just, I didn't even see it before and I just popped it. So. <laughs> Brandon, <laughs> I didn't know you were a fan of Blockhead. I'm not feeling them today. <laughs> I had a bunch in there. I just like skipped some Daft Punk. I skipped some Nicki Minaj. I'm just not feeling it. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my god. Uh, okay, I'm looking at this. Let's see. Looking pretty good, honestly. There's definitely not as many bubbles on this piece as there were for the last one we did, the hair. Her ear is still kind of funky. I can see the seam line on it, so. Okay. I think we're pretty much good at this point for this hair piece, or the, not the hair piece, the head. And so head will fit in here and then hair will just fit right on top. And that's what we want to see. And um, as you can see, the ears line up almost perfectly with the hair right here. So there's no over sanding that happened. Um, her head is also pushed pretty flush against the back part of the hair. So there's a line there, but there's no huge gaps. And you're not going to see that anyway um, in the kit. So what we want to be able to do is, you know, have a magnet attached and then be able to pull these pieces out. Looks like in the back of the hair here, there's either a manufacturing hole or what I assume they wanted like a rod or a pin that would go in on the opposite side here to connect the two. Um, I'm not going to use this guide hole or whatever this is for the kit. Um, just doesn't really make sense with the two faces. I'll probably put a small magnet in here and then a larger magnet in here, but we'll have to check on the space. So, got these done. I'm going to move on to the other face. We've still got a little bit of time left in this stream. Um, probably won't finish the face today, but you know, it'd be good to get both almost knocked out. This face um, is a little bit different, I can already tell. The seam line is just as bad, um, but there's also a big nub here. So you can see this extra area is not meant to have resin, similar to this. So this area should be, well, my lighting. Yeah, so this area here is flat, and this area has a little nub. So I'm gonna go off first and cut this off. So 
also doing that whole two-toned resin thing. Don't worry about this song at all. This resin is a little easier to cut. It's it's kind of got a weird texture here. I'm able to dig into it pretty easily. Um, that was interesting. Usually you can kind of feel it and it's gliding like but like butter. Um, but that one felt kind of gritty as I'm standing or as I'm cutting it. So just different weird things. It doesn't really mean anything in the long run if I'm able to sand it, but. Oh, now I remember this song. Okay, so I've sanded that and up down. Um, it did not take very long at all. It was pretty small. Um, the texture was kind of weird and gritty anyway, so the sandpaper really took to it. I was able to sand it down. So from here on, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna be working along the edges of this uh, head and go for it. This kit. Uh, had also had a few pock marks and areas where I'm gonna have to pop bubbles, but we'll go as we see it. Making pretty good progress at this point. We've got probably half the kit, maybe even more of that sanded. So everything on this side is all sanded already. And then everything over here, it's mostly small stuff um, besides this big piece. Um, it's all gonna be like next time. Hoping maybe to get all the sanding done, definitely not next time, but maybe by the end of next week. So not not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, um, sanding will be all done and then we can start moving on to the next steps, which are giving your kit a bath and thinning and starting the putty. The fun stuff, the stage two of prep, you may say. Still in stage one here. And in that ear again, um, now that I know that the seam lines are pretty bad in between the like top and bottom part of the ear, I'm gonna go a little bit heavier on that area. I don't have to catch it in the second visual inspection. It's also seam line I missed at the top here. Kind of glanced over it. There's a weird texture going on here as well. I'm gonna smooth all of that down. Double check with the hair to make sure that you're not um, messing with a, an area. Yeah, so I'm not even gonna see any of that, um, but it still bothers me <laughs> to know it exists. So I'm gonna smooth it down. I'm thinking I'm gonna drill out this area with the big pin vise. There's, it's not really a bubble and it's not really a um, texture thing, but it's like a weird scratch mark that I'd be over sanding. Okay. You can definitely see the 400 grit scratchies. Um, that I left on this kit. So, I need to go in a little more heavier with the 800. Yep, got pock marks too. So I'm just gonna drill them out as I see them. Interestingly, they seem to be almost the same place yeah so these pock marks are identical on the other head as well so I'm wondering what happened in that casting process or if what base mold she used because um, yeah they are in the exact same spot 
which would mean I would probably see a bubble here but I don't so that looks seems to be a manufacturing problem um, this kit had a manufacturing problem where the face side of the face had some indents on it when she sculpted it um, or maybe just something happened and so on all of the kits um, that she sold it would most likely have this defect where it have like these two little pock marks um, not a big deal if you can fix it but it's just something interesting you know that sometimes happens especially if you get two faces two faces just means twice the work in painting <laughs> it's like <laughs> I seem to be painting double faces quite often I think like I've done it at least three times last year so starting this year out um, doing that as well I have not decided on an eye style for this kit yet though so the benefit of doing um, an original character is you can paint the eyes however you want there's no recommended you know style that um, the character already has you know you have like a I guess Miku would be a bad example because she um, has so many styles and stuff but like I'm thinking of um, narrow so narrow from the fate series she has a very specific eye style um, that I would you know recreate on the figure instead of going my own way and doing a different thing so for these kits it's a lot more fun in my opinion because you can paint it however you want um, if you've got a, an eye style that you really liked that you saw from like an artist on Twitter you can just save it and then use it as reference um, I do that quite often I pull from a bunch of different sources and um, figure out what kind of eye style I want but yeah I haven't decided for this one no idea I'll have to do some research she's also got the second face with the spooky indented eyes and the little um, circle in there so that'll be fun there's also what I like to do is um, collect a bunch of reference from people who have already built a kit um, and use that as inspiration but for this one there's really not much it's a relatively newer sculpt and it's an original character on top of that so um, if there are any finished builds like it's going to be difficult to find unless the uh, uh, artists themselves retweeted it from another person oh I've got my wingdings playing now I was wondering when that would come up so I found some freaky music I went down a Spotify rabbit hole at one point and uh, found this music which is like all in wingdings and I haven't been able to find it since, but yeah, I don't know what's up with it. I like the beats, but I have no idea what I would even look up to find this or who the artists are or anything. <laughs> I was wondering when Wayne Dings would show up. <laughs> yeah, you remember my Wayne Dings music cat? <laughs> like this is gonna be some freaky shit <laughs> I don't even know if it's wingdings at that well I just call it my wingdings music um and I think I mentioned it before but I'm part of a, a few indie music discord groups and somebody posted some like wingdings music like this and I just lost it because I legit thought I was like one of a hundred people in the world that listens to wingdings music it's so funny <laughs> Yeah, so if you look on the Now Playing uh, Autumn and the song title, I cannot even read that to you. It's just like alien winding runes music. Um, I don't even know what the style of music is called. This is like something entirely different. But yeah, there's a bunch of artists that are wingdings artists. And so if you play the radio of one of these artists, you end up with um, an entire <laughs> radio station full of them. Yeah, I should. Oh my god. Yeah, I should. That would be really funny. Or like copy the song title and put it in Google and run it through Google. I haven't tried that yet. I probably should. I bet SoundCloud is even more full of the Wingdings artists. Oh, that was a close one. I just dropped my X-Acto knife um, and it came like hurling toward me, but I caught it just hobby things you know almost stabbing yourself pretty normal need that ceramic zm knife <laughs> oh yeah itunes i don't know i haven't used itunes in forever same with um i don't know <laughs> i 
can't even think about. I've used Spotify forever. I used to use Pandora like God 2012, and then I switched to Spotify and I haven't gone back since. Um, but I still do like to buy music occasionally from my favorite artists that are like merch, because that way you're still supporting them. They really don't get anything through the stream. Okay, I've been kind of silent regarding the kit, um, but there's really not much happening besides the same thing that I did on the other base. Now that I know that they're basically the same mold. <laughs> I'll be fine, Cannon. I've been through worse, I can tell you that. Yeah, I sliced myself pretty gnarly a couple times, but just hobby things, you know. Oh my god, this music. Okay. I'm gonna smooth the ear out a little bit before I forget. Um, it's a little bit jagged right now after I sanded it with the 400. This type of song is what I said when I was like, my Spotify might get freaky. This is about the extent of the freakiness. Oh, now it's back to normal, so that's fine. This is one of my favorite artists, M83. Although I'm not a huge, huge fan of this particular song. Okay. And then also, I think what I did, yeah, I had the cloth paper. And it's getting pretty soft. I'm gonna rub it off with the um, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. But I might need to use a new paper soon. Do I get requests for creating specific aisles or do my clients give me the freedom of choosing the eye style? Interesting question. Um, so I think in terms of what a client wants, it really first comes down to if the client is asking me to build an original character or a licensed character. So uh, most majority of the kits that I have built have been licensed character kits for people, as in like, you know, the Mikus, the Sabres, the, you know, any character that comes from any IP manga anime game. Um, they, I would say pretty much 100% of the time they want the eyes of the licensed characters based on the existing art of that character. So um, generally, you know, if you have an anime or a game, um, it comes with the art is drawn by a certain artist um, and then they want the style of that artist. And so I do my best to recreate that style as much as possible, um, or recreate the artwork as much as possible. It's not going to be exact, but, you know, I can at least get the proportions and the style as close as possible. Um, in terms of original characters, I I think I've only really painted one original character for somebody and they basically had a, a, I asked for a bunch of references um, and they gave me some freedom but they wanted you know specific colors of the eye you know like they wanted the eyes blue or they wanted them teal and they wanted the eye angular that sort of thing so um, let's see I'm reading real quick <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, yeah, as much as I would love to take on all your requests, oh, I just can't. I, you guys are my top though. Like, <laughs> Generally when I like to take requests from clients, it's people that I know first um, because, I mean, it's just I know who I'll be working with um, rather than a stranger who might not, you know, reply to me or do anything. That's always tough, um, what was I saying before? But yeah, so... Um, in terms of eyes, the original kits that I did paint, they had a rough idea of what they wanted me to do, and then I had mostly creative freedom. I also had a case where a client had a, a licensed character, and she didn't want the eye style like the character at all, and so that one was a little bit challenging. I really wasn't given much um, idea or info on how to go about it, and uh, I could just hope at this point that that's what they <laughs> ended up wanting, because. The more details you give an artist, uh, the better the result is going to be. If you have a vision in your head, please communicate it to your artist, because um, otherwise, you know, we really hate guessing on, you know, what you will or won't like. Um, it, it's pretty difficult, so 
you know, go in with a vision or if you want something painted like a character, please just straight up say that. Like, I'm not going to take offense or anything. I'm more than happy to try to recreate the style as close as possible. In fact, that's, I actually enjoy that quite a bit. I want it to look just like the character, so um, hopefully I get that. Usually, you know, there's only so much you can do. Okay. Actually, pretty close to 10. I didn't even realize that. This stream kind of flew by. I've um, just been standing on it, so I'm going to sand this ear just a little bit more, and then uh, we will continue this on Wednesday. So I think today is March 1st. Let's see. Yeah, so March 3rd will be um, my next stream at same time, 8 p.m. We'll be sanding the rest of this head, and then, hmm... Probably going in with some larger piece again. I need, probably need to start working on her bloomers. Um, I want to get it to a point where I only have the small stuff left. And this piece here is going to be a particular pain. Uh, this end, might actually end up taking an entire stream, or at least an hour and a half, because there's a seam line running all along every single frill. There's a bunch of little tiny tabs sticking out. Um, I saw a bunch of bubbles in it, and so it's like the frills are probably the worst piece of this kit, followed by um, her main base, like torso. <laughs> yep, same plum channel, same plum time. Yeah, I'm also East Coast. That's been a struggle making the time, um, mostly because it's like I got people waking up at that time, I got people going to sleep at that time, I got people just getting off work at this time, and so um, in the end, I just decided. You know, I'm just going to do it at a time that's convenient for me um, and will get me in the schedule of doing things. Like when I get back into school, I'll still have this um, time reserved for kits. So even if, you know, I'm sure I'll continue streaming, but even if I don't, I'll have that dedicated time to do it. Um, so that'll be real nice. Actually, stream will probably be more viable, you know, later towards this year because I won't be working on commissions. I'm only be working on my own stuff, so that would be a good excuse for me to just sit and build something of my own and still keep providing content, you know. Nobody wants to watch an artist who has zero content, so. One stream, it can review my top figures I owned. Ooh. <laughs> oh no, I don't know about that, Brandon. <laughs> we'll have to think about it. Yeah, so many times plum chum. Oh my god, it sounds cool. We'll, we'll think on it. <laughs> and then Autumn, are you suggesting garage kits or PVC figures? Because those are two totally different ball games. Um, PVC. <laughs> oh no, guys. <laughs> PVC. Um, yeah, I can think on it. Um, I do collect a lot of PVC figures. We'll we'll touch on that topic next stream. Um, but I keep a lot of them these days around for painting reference. Um, I definitely do have a couple of top favorites, so maybe I'll bring a few in um, and show them off under the light here so you guys can see uh, which ones I keep in my collection um, and which ones are my favorite. Just wrapping up um, this small area here. Every pockmark I find out I'm going to have to check on, oops, on the other kit because knowing that they're almost identical molds. Oh, yep, yeah, same thing. So I was like, I picked up this pockmark out of here and then it's right on the other one too. So good way to be consistent and uh, double check your work. <laughs> oh no, guys. <laughs> you, uh, it's what happens when you allow stream to decide things for you. <laughs> you call yourselves whatever you want. I got to think on the name. <laughs> or I could just call you all Plum Blossoms. <laughs> yeah. It's like it doesn't really come to mind. It's, uh... <laughs> oh no. Brandon, stop. <laughs> cursed. <laughs> You're cursed. Oh my god. Okay. I have decided I will wrap up with this song literally titled leave you behind and then after that i will be heading out at this point i've also sanded most of this head down so next time we will go um, and give it a second pass and then i'll just jump straight into the next stuff <laughs> oh no 
love you guys. So cursed. <laughs> <laughs> You should just call me my toe. That's my my username is also an entire different story. Um, you're not entirely off the mark there in the origin, so we'll explore that another day. <laughs> wow, I found another air bubble right at the top here. Actually, what the interesting. Oh, I'm being dumb. It's definitely too late in the night because I'm just like, what is this hole here for? And it's literally the top of the hair. Oh my God, I'm face palming right now. Okay. <laughs> oh no, that's another stream. No one wanna watch feet streams. Maybe some of you guys do, but definitely that's not my thing. Hence so why it just went to Munto. Okay. Anyway, I'm dropping this topic. There will be no more talk of that. Okay, giving this one final sand. Yeah, I gotta get Rocket in here and show his little posies on the screen. If I yell for him, he actually comes when I call him, so I wonder. I gotta try that one of these days. Yeah, Missile does need his own webcam. <laughs> Although majority of the time it'd just be like a sleep camera. So all he does is lay on our um, furniture. Just take a nap and then he gets up and just bark and that's it. He's a cutie. We thought about giving him his own Instagram for the longest time. But then we're just like, that's a lot of work too. So I don't think so. Okay. Very much so. Oh yeah, a gift missile would be really cute. <laughs> yes, just a looping five minute video <laughs> in the corner. Okay. Also getting a hand cramp in my right hand. I must have been gripping the resin pretty hard because my thumb is like killing me right now not no has been two minutes of like grabbing pieces at awkward angles so and then i'm just smoothing the hair okay all right well i mostly got this sanded down song is over which means the party's over um if i go any farther with this i'm just gonna keep sanding randomly so i know already with five <laughs> all right guys well with that um i'm gonna wrap up this stream it's a lot of fun talking to you today um thank you for tuning in hopefully you'll be able to catch my wednesday stream as well um that's pretty much it more sand and sand and never stops so hope you guys have a good night uh good day wherever you are and i will see you later